Hello my SOC Universe, welcome to the review of the Serie A action that happened on Wednesday, December 6th, which is a holiday in Italy and of course in Austria too, so I actually made a point of watching quite some stuff uh, from the games. I actually saw four games uh, fully and then actually in the halftime of Milan Juve they actually showed some other highlights too, so sounds all good to me. Um, it was around that, um, let's put it that way, the, um, up until the evening I think everything went a little bit too much to my liking. Then in the evening, of course, uh, I'm not wearing Milan, I'm wearing Sampdoria because I think they fully deserve to be worn. Today and Milan did not win, so they don't deserve to be worn uh, in that sense. Um, but you know, I'm not devastated. Uh, I was about to make the video right after Milan Juve, but um, you know, I knew I have to get up early. We have a loads of snow outside, so I knew that you know, if you, uh, we, I needed to uh, get out, and it means you need more time to get all the snow away. So, yeah, uh, and then it allowed me some reflection. I knew the La Liga video needs to get out first as well, and so I'm doing this uh, in the afternoon. Uh, of uh, of the seventh, uh, which allowed me a little bit more reflection of what actually had happened, and I think uh, in this case, in this case, it's a good thing. I love to do immediate, yeah, emotional reactions, but I have to say this time, I think it's better to have a little bit reflected upon stuff. As I said, I'm wearing some Doria, a wonderful shirt. They had a great showing, and let's. Look at the headlines. I mean, I you saw it in the head the title of the video. It's uh, Milan is tristessa, the tristessa milanesa. Uh, both Milan teams losing, uh, both snapping sizable streaks. Uh, Inter's eight win winning streak and uh, Milan's twenty seven unbeaten uh, run. Also, the run seventeen scoring at least two goals. All that came to a screeching halt. However, on the other side, that means the league is getting a whole lot more interesting. Roma getting closer, Juve getting closer, Atalanta getting closer, Napoli not getting closer. Let's look at the games. Um, it started a Cagliari, Ben Benevento, Benevento bouncing back from the loss to Milan with a 2-1 uh, win. Atalanta having no trouble disposing Parma. Uh, Muriel, Zapata and Gossens, the uh, three goals. And afterwards, uh, Fabio Livarani, who did such great work at Lecce. I really liked him last season. Uh, was then a little bit surprised to see him at Parma, never could get them going in Parma. I, I like them a lot. No, they don't look good as we will see. Uh, Bologna Udine 2-2, two, two, then uh, Roma really also flying again. Roma is, is, is a very um, frustrating team in many ways because uh, against the smaller points they can have all the great uh, showings and when they play against the big ones suddenly it's not clicking. In this case, Mkhitaryan sets up Majoral. The second goal by Majoral is the one that you should watch. A really, really nice shot up in the corner and then a, a Mkhitaryan penalty. 3-0 uh, at the half. Crotone pulls one uh, back late through goal image. But, you know, Roma bagging three points. I had Lazio Fiorentina. And, you know, all these games from Atalanta up until Torino uh, Hellas were all at the same time. Which in a way I love, it just would be better if there would be wall, would be gel, they could switch back and forth. So I had the um, uh, Sampdoria Inter game on, this, on the main screen and I had Lazio Fiorentina where I didn't see that much. Although I was uh, pleasantly surprised by the red Fiorentina jersey, although they could have well played in the purple ones as well. Um, Caicedo gives Lazio a very early lead in a, in a game that I thought was... Um, well balanced in many ways um, however Lazio a little bit more sharp and um, a wonderful pass by uh, Luis Alberto to uh, Immobile almost would have made the equalizer for however Immobile was offside and then you know the second half again I did not see all, the, all, all, all much but I thought it was finely balanced Yes, Lazio is threatening, but sometimes uh, Fiorentina was also coming. And then after a corner, Immobile slams it home to make it tune in the 75th. You think it's all over. However, late on, Vlahovic uh, converts a penalty for Fiorentina. And there were some really tense moments at the very, very, very end. However, Lazio gets a 2-1 win. And then Sampdoria Inter. Uh, that was a crazy first half. If the ref thought he can easily, uh, Valeri, 
can ease into this game and uh, you know get it a little bit going later. No, this was right from the get go. A really, really, really tough one. Um, already, uh, I think around the tenth minute. A really a marginal handball by Thor Thorsby's given after a corner corner kick. You think the danger is over. I mean, Sampdoria came out flying, then Inter had like five or six, six minutes, very really great. And in that period, uh, this penalty, VAR penalty fell and um, just barely deflected. However, it was given. And I was reminded, yeah, maybe the, the, my series where I think the panel is not justified and the panel is miscontinuous. Yes, it continues because Sanchez. Uh, shoots it very poorly, it is saved, and then on the rebound, Ashley Young puts it onto the woodwork. Uh, started a crazy half. But then it was Sampdoria's turn. The light is driving me nuts. Just a second. I'm going. So um, I have to say, it was a crazy half, and then Sampdoria got a little bit better, had uh, more of the game, had chances, also hit the bar. I thought they should have gotten a penalty earlier, a potential handball, but then um, Kandreva gets uh, a penalty and converts. And this was typically, yeah, former Inter player, of course, he wants to score against Inter. The game was also rather interestingly. Um, I would say, affected by a flock of seagulls that were, uh, whenever the game was going, they were flying around. It looked really weird. Um, and it uh, was especially at when the second goal was going, Tom Scott really had a great run, but I have to ask Inter defending. Keita Balde, also former Inter player, or maybe even alone from Inter, he is alone against five defenders and Tom Scott. And no one is picking him up. He gets a ball and can pull it in the in, into the left corner. That really, really did not sit right with me. Uh, that you, no one is picking him up. That was really a very, very odd decision from the Inter defenders. So yeah, Sampdoria having a 2-0 lead and I'm feeling quite happy about it. Um, and yeah, then honestly, I mean, Inter did not play all that bad, especially in the second half. They really dominated the game. Um, uh, the one thing is that uh, Conte needed to bring on Perisic, he needed to bring on Lukaku, although he probably wanted, 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 wanted to save him. He even brought an Eriksen on, on late, especially when um, after them De Vrij had uh, scored a goal. However, Inter cannot pull it out. Uh, it was really, really an interesting game. Uh, Inter had chances, there were some close calls, but with some uh, luck, uh, Sampdoria could have made a third one too. Great game, great result for this Milan fan. Uh, Sassuolo uh, beats Genoa 2-1, um, then Torino Hellas a 1-1, and then Napoli against Spezia. That was another one of those crazy ones. In the first 10 minutes, uh, Insigne could have had a hat-trick. He scores none of these, and it's sometimes in ridiculous fashions how he misses the chances. Uh, I barely see such an aptitude. Um, you know, I, I, I love Insigne. I ordered that jersey and I wanted to get Insigne on, on there. They didn't let me. When I, when I ordered it, well, I probably could, could get it, but yeah, a few euros saved. Um, but Napoli, I mean, the game that went, went more even towards the, at the end of the second half and uh, in the, uh, towards the end of the first half and the second half, Napoli continued pushing, 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 and Patania finally just came, came out five minutes early in 58th, makes it 1 0 Na Napoli. However, 10 minutes later, a penalty uh, is given that gives Spezia a great chance to come back. Still, Napoli had chances to win this game outright, but were rather clumsy. And then uh, Ismaili says, sent off with a yellow red. And you think, yeah, this is not made for Napoli. No. Pobega scores. There was a, 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 I think it was again Zola that made the shot. It came off the post, and there are two now Napoli fans there, but the ball bounces exactly to Pobega, who can pull it into the net. Makes it 2 1 for Spezia. And then uh, Elmas came on, uh, and Llorente came, came on, and I think there were two, two chances where Elmas should have scored. I mean, one where he and Llorente don't have communication. Devastating loss for Napoli. Absolutely devastating loss for Napoli. And then everything was primed for Milan uh, Juve. What I did not realize, I looked at the lineup and then I'm seeing, uh, that's interesting, Dalot, hmm. Hauger, hmm. Castillejo, hmm. that seemed a rather thin lineup for Milan. And then, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, Rebic can perform well, but he has not been as convincing. 
but Rebic was out and I expected really Krunic to play. Um, but I have to say that Calabria actually substituted Krunic in the defensive midfield position very, very, very well. But you could see me, the Milan squad was really on the last tooth. Everyone was talking before how Cuadrado and uh, Zana missing for Juve, but uh, having not only Tonali out, Ibrahimovic out, uh, and and so on. It was really a last last ditch squad for uh, Milan, where there was, uh, I mean, there was no depth on on the bench anymore. Uh, but having said all that, Milan actually performed still quite well. Yes, Haugen and Casejo are not that strong uh, as would be if uh, Rebic and Lea would come uh, left and right. Ibrahimovic is at, at the center. You were also put a lot of pressure on Kessie, kind of relying on, on the fact that Calabria uh, will not be as good in opening a play as Tonali and Benacer are. They did it very well. However, it was also a very finely tuned first half that whenever Milan was in the opposition half, the ball was there, they could press high and Juve had to play um, out from there. When Juve managed that, they could put pressure on Milan. I thought the first exchanges belonged to Milan. Castillejo needs to score. I mean, uh, how Bentancur coughs that one. When Bentancur was probably the worst Juve player on the, on the pitch. Uh, he needs to um, score, bar none. From there, but then Juve had a really, really strong peer peer where I think he is in the 15th hit the post, um, and then makes a goal after a really nice interplay with Dybala. I mean, he gets the, he gets the ball, uh, pulls it to Dybala, and then he escapes to Hernandez, who had a little bit of a stinker on the Milan side. Uh, Dybala with a great back heel assist. Kesa make, makes one deal. Yeah, this was well played. I immediately saw that yeah, Tiananmen needs to defend much, much better there. And then you actually retreat a little bit. Or was it Milan pack packing them back? Uh, I. It's always one. Do you want to do that or do you not want to do it? But Milan then actually was pushing. But I could feel that Jalan Nogle. He took many great shots, but they were all easy, um, easy saves for uh, Chesney. But uh, Charles Noglu really uh, stepping into his playmaker role because we had no Tonali, no Benacer there. And so uh, he really had to hold everything thing together. Hauge uh, played all right, but you know, uh, you, you can see experience is still missing. Who played really well was Kea because Ronaldo was a non-factor the entire game. I think his best action was a defensive header. That says a lot. I, I never felt that Ronaldo will threaten. However, they never could deal with uh, Dybala and Chie especially Chiesa. Chiesa had a really, really strong game. It hurts a little bit because Chiesa was rumored to go to Milan at a point. Uh, fortunately, Milan gets the equalizer uh, where, yes, Cialnogli probably uh, make, make, makes a foul on Rab, Rabio, but then build up the ball comes out to, uh, I think, via Hauge to Leao, who then plays it right across to Calabria, who can pull it nicely in the internet. That was a nice goal, and actually, uh, Calabria really showing his worth for that team. And then in the second half, it was literally in almost all Milan there uh, uh, at first. I mean, Milan really concentrated, come, come, come out, wanting to go for the second goal. But uh, with this uh, Keza and Dybala, it is not that easy. And, you know, if you miss a big chance, like I think Leao did it, and then right on the counter, you, you could see Keza, um, was it uh, Keza played the, the ball to Dybala? You can see how everyone is converging onto Dybala and Dybala plays the right to Chiesa who pulls it on his weak left makes it 2-1 for um, Juve and at that point then uh, Pirlo takes Chiesa and Dybala off the two, uh, the two that combined for both goals and I was thinking ooh that's interesting I mean I didn't necessarily want to see mechanic come come on but I actually felt a little bit ease um, and Brian Diaz came on for Hauge it's so and so. I mean, I, I, they both played well in the Europa League. They both have talent, clearly, but they're not yet well in the squad. But Milan kept pushing uh, forward, but they didn't find the equalizer. And it's West McKennie who, uh, with Kulusevski, and again, <laughs> Dybala, Chiesa, Kulusevski, McKennie, those the four uh, co combined for the goals. It was a nice shot. Uh, McKennie even having a good shot before that. What gets me positive is that Milan, yes, it was clearly a beat team, a rather weakish side, but they kept playing forward. They kept pushing Juve back. They probably should have had a penalty. 
Bentancur should have probably sent off. Yes, ahead of the Milan goal, uh, it should have been probably a foul. Um, I think Tiananas had a pretty rough tackle in, in, in as well, which uh, given that Tonali was sent off something that I did not find as bad. Yeah, I have to say the overall performance for Milan does not leave me empty, just the result a little bit does, but with Inter losing, you still are in first place, it just gets all a little bit tighter. And Pioli said it right, uh, it was a great, a great uh, positive performance with, um, you know, last minute squad. I mean, you didn't know until the morning uh, that Kronic is out and... Um, What's not the other guy? Re, uh, Re, 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 is out. I mean, Salzamakas, uh, the guy who has not lost with Milan yet, uh, also could not play. So, yeah, um, you were just showing more qual quality and for that reason deserved the win. So, let's look where things stand after this. Uh, it was a good game, especially in the first half. Milan still in first half, but it's Inter now, it's Inter still uh, the favorites on the on, on Scudetto and Juve now really close with me uh, behind Milan for the Champions uh, spot and also for the Champions League spot. Then it's uh, Roma, Napoli, Atalanta with Atalanta uh, enjoying a resurgence. We don't know yet about Sassuolo. Towards the bottom, I said Parma is in trouble. Torino is getting a little bit out of there. Let's see, they have to, we will see they have to play Milan next. I'm a little bit worried about that game as well. Crotone, Genoa, yeah. Cagliari also not look looking that great. I want to at least keep one, if not both, of these jerseys here for next season. Um, if we adjust the standings, uh, we see only that now Napoli, thanks to the game, less would um, and Atalanta also would go ahead of Sassuolo. If you look here at the performance graphs, it's still Sassuolo that has the best performance. Milan now a little bit packed back, and on the bottom, yeah, Fiorentina is a definite disappointment for the season. Next round. Uh, as I said, Milan Torino, Saturday, 8.45. Um, Benevento Atalanta, I think, could be interesting, but I think the big one is, of course, Roma Inter. Inter having a very tough schedule after that, they play Juventus. Um, other than that, I don't think that's the really the outstanding match. Uh, Juve Sassuolo, I don't expect much, but you know, you never know. In any case, let me know what you thought about the Serie A games, uh, especially. Uh, Milan Juve, I'd be interested how, how you saw it. I saw it as a positive performance from Milan, where, as I said, Juve's quality just shone through and they were the better team. Uh, I don't deny that. And Milan had it coming, to be honest. In any case, give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye!